I just rewatched Tesla's 4 hour autonomy day event and 2 hour battery day event. This isn't going to be a super heavily edited video, but I'm going to run through my notes on everything I picked up on that I had not previously realized. Starting with autonomy day. Very early on, Elon Musk came out and said how Tesla's next generation FSD chip, or what I'll call potentially hardware 4, is going to be 3 times better and more performant, and will have a more refined architecture, and Tesla will be making all of the expected improvements on the hardware side of things. And Tesla's advantage really is in the fleet for full self-driving, and it comes down to the fleet learning, how they can leverage the size of the fleet, and what Tesla calls imitation learning, using all micro interactions from the fleet for Tesla to imitate and simulate and test the software. And one of the speakers brought up on the simulation side of things, that you would have to solve self-driving before you could make an accurate simulator. And Andre Carpathy talked about how you need a large, varied and real data set. It has to have all three of those characteristics. It needs to be large, it needs to be varied, and it needs to be real. And vision really is the only pillar of a self-driving system. This kind of ties back to what we've been hearing more recently from Elon Musk about not necessarily even needing radar. So we'll see if that plays out. But looking back, there was a little bit of a hint on that from Elon. 2019 held Autonomy Day and 2020 held Battery Day. And Elon Musk has hinted that 2021 could hold Tesla AI Day. And Elon kind of hints to that in Autonomy Day saying, quote, that's for another day in reference to a question about Tesla's artificial intelligence for Dojo and perhaps what they could be using their AI prowess for. And Tesla really stressed how the car can operate independent from the fleet. Of course, it gets all its learnings from the fleet and from the Tesla mothership, but it does not need to be connected to the fleet in order to be self-driving. And Elon talks about expensive sensors that are unnecessary, that are basically just like expensive appendices. And he told everyone there, everyone at the event, everyone attending, you will see that LiDAR, HD maps, all of those are completely unnecessary. At the time, this was a very big stance and not very many industry experts agreed we had have seen the tide kind of turn since then, since that point in 2019. Anyways, not much insight in into Elon potentially thinking about removing LiDAR at this point, but I think the point still stands about vision being the singular necess necessity. And going back to the Dojo AI day point, Elon did say, quote, Tesla could take a, an AWS angle with their artificial intelligence. So a little bit of a moonshot, but I think they could be doing something with cryptocurrency. Leave a comment if you want me to make a dedicated video on that. They talked about how they'll have to have more aggressive driving modes as options and that they need to be adjustable and how that's really important. So I don't know if that's going to be something they focus on in the future or if it's just the standard Tesla safety that is optimized and maybe how long into the future it takes them to get to a point where they are able to say this is a little more risky but you'll get to your destination faster with a more aggressive driving mode. But they did say how the cars will be getting more assertive over time as the confidence improves. And basically they said there are three levels to the autonomy rollout. The first is Tesla solving for the feature complete, completing all of the features and capabilities of a full self-driving car. We are not yet there yet for the public rollout, but we should be nearing that. Probably by the end of the year, the entire fleet, every single car that owns full self-driving will have the feature complete full self-driving. Not sure if they'll still be calling it beta at that point, but beta is just a title. It literally means nothing other than the fact that Tesla does not have 100% confidence in the software at this point. Obviously, they need to work so much out, but they are testing it day in and day out. Getting back to the point, that is the first phase is feature complete. The second phase is solving autonomy to a degree to which Tesla feels it is safe enough for the user to not be in the driver's seat. And the third phase would be convincing regulators of that fact. So I wonder how much of a disconnect there's going to be between phase two and phase three, but definitely something to think about and to refocus ourselves on the point that, that, that those are the three phases that Tesla is thinking about internally and not necessarily levels one, two, three, four, and five of autonomy. Elon did say how he thinks truck platooning will happen first. And I thought that was interesting. They said that'll be an easier thing to convince regulators of. I'm not sure if that's true though, just thinking about in my 
my mind big trucks barreling down the road. I don't know if that'll be easier to convince regulators of. We will have to see if that does end up playing out. I'm not sure. Obviously, we don't have any semis on the road, and if I asked Elon at this point, he would say Tesla's full self-driving will be active before there are many semis on the road, but I digress. They talk about how they audit the different fields of view. Every camera is overlapping and trying to make sure there aren't any discrepancies in between the different fields of view. And they control the deployment in a closed loop, so they're testing everything before they push it out to the wider fleet. Elon specifically mentioned an Uber Airbnb model for the Tesla Robo taxis. That's definitely going to have to be something I circle back on, but I did want to point that out. I'm going to dive into the nuances of potentially what that means for Tesla and the Robo taxis in the future. They did say, however, that they'll be using the same Tesla app for the Robo taxis. They're not going to spin off another app, which is interesting to hear. I think it's probably the right move. It'll allow them to Trojan horse any Robo taxi riders into potentially buying a car or any solar or power walls, anything like that. Elon did also say how the snake charger is easy during the Q&A section, and he also touched on how Tesla will be cash flow neutral in the fleet build-up phase, but they will be extremely cash flow positive once the fleet is active. So I don't know if they are still planning on playing that accounting game, but yeah, I think Tesla will be prioritizing the autonomous fleet and general scale of production to accelerate the mission before we see any extreme profitability coming from the autonomy sides of things. Elon did also seem a little skeptical of using and owning a fleet of Tesla robo taxis. He said that rental car fleet seems unwieldy, but he said you can definitely go ahead and try it. Anyway, I just thought it was interesting because I know lots of people are planning to buy up a bunch of cyber trucks and operate a fleet. Maybe Elon at the time, at least during autonomy day, was not thinking that was going to be something that people would do and they would just lend out their one or two Teslas. So I'm not sure. I just thought that was an interesting observation from my end. There will be a way for remote interaction from the car in case of emergencies or in case of any time when the car gets stuck and needs to be remote controlled, if you will. And there will also be a transition period with the steering wheel, but Elon says consumers will demand the steering wheel gets removed and that consumers will demand that traditional driving be outlawed. He also says if you need geofenced areas, you don't have a real self-driving. I thought that was a very confident comment from him and I, it just made me laugh. Cells will be a constraint. I'll talk more about that in the second half of this video, but that did get brought up during autonomy day. And they will bias sales to smaller battery pack vehicles to prioritize the biggest fleet size. Going back to the regulatory problem, he said how regulators are convinced by data. It's as simple as that. Tesla will operate fleets in dense urban environments. And it, going back to how humans drive cars, human is basically a camera on a slow gimbal. I thought that was a very accurate way of putting it and really puts everything in perspective. And Elon did say at the time, at that point in early 2019, energy had been starved. Their energy division, everything, all the focus was on car production. So I think that's going to really continue to be the case until Tesla has enough cells from everyone, which is it's hard to see light at the end of the tunnel there because yeah, I think that's going to continue to be a problem for them. And obviously they want the cars out there more than potentially they want the power walls against people's homes. Their energy products are still key to the mission and I think that could really be the second phase of growth. I hadn't thought about energy taking such a long time to scale up, but I think it could be many more years out before energy is able to grow as fast as I've been thinking it will. But hearing that from Elon did make me reconsider that. Anyways, moving on to battery day. Elon said how Terra is the new Giga. This was basically Elon Musk, Drew Bagolino, and Tesla themselves flexing in 2020 after the stock did a 10x in one year. They're sitting on $20 billion in cash. What are they going to do? They have all the resources necessary to change the world. Elon is thinking bigger than ever, and they are going to go all out. That's what this presentation was all about for the batteries. Even at the very beginning of the event, Elon said how they're going to get more into the battery improvements even in the future. They did leave some stuff out that they want to talk about at a later date. So always fun to hear from Elon that there is more to come. He said if this was easy, everyone would do it and Tesla is aiming to be the best at manufacturing in the world. There will be tons of supplemental production. This is not the plan they laid out in their presentation was Tesla specific and Tesla owned battery production lines. They are of course going to be using supplemental production, which 
which will all sum to a very great total. They talked about how the structural battery pack actually allows for negative mass almost, which I thought was a very interesting point. Ice vehicles will eventually turn into collector's items. It's a funny thing to think about. And Elon did give a shout out to some companies in China. He did that very recently on Twitter for Neo, but he did say companies in China are doing great work for EV production and manufacturing and the like. And they said in the long run, there'll be it'll be a 50-50 split between transport and grid for battery cells and battery production and battery supply where that all gets leveled out. But the cell is, again, the fundamental constraint. But Tesla is going all out. And they did touch on how freedom of action makes vehicle to grid really low utility, makes it not necessary. Stationary storage has really barely begun transitioning, as I, as I already mentioned. But affordability of the cars is very important. And Tesla is working 24 hours a day on these projects. It's just insane. What I also found interesting was how the teams are vertically integrated. Tesla talks a lot about vertical integration, but none of that really means anything if the teams are not vertically integrated themselves, which they are, which I think is a key point that many people miss, especially if you're trying to differentiate two companies. How well do the companies within the team work together? So Tesla's going as small as optimizing for electron path length in their new batteries. They're removing the tabs to save time, cost, and increase thermal and performance architecture. Battery Day was all about not as much the batteries themselves, but more how they are produced and how this is Tesla's most valuable skill. It's why they're worth hundreds of billions of dollars. No one else has done anything close to Tesla's scale of electric vehicles. Tesla owns the technology stack and each and every further vertical integration adds to improve efficiency and production, which can then save manufacturing costs and pass along savings to the consumer and then introduce a new wave of demand. Elon said he has spoken with the CEOs of nickel mining companies. In other words, he's in direct contact with them, not necessarily for a deal, but to ensure their mining so that Tesla can keep growing. And I find it fascinating and smart that Tesla has plans for different battery chemistries for each application of their fleet. Materials in, products out, everything done on site and as rapidly as possible as to accelerate the transition to sustainable energy. Tesla is going to become the best manufacturer on the planet. And if they do perfect the flow of production with recycling, then they might not even need to have to have more mining done in the future or drastically limit the amount of mining. So basically, overall, in total, 50% more range, 50% cheaper to produce, and two-thirds less expensive to invest in future expansion. So there you have it. Those were my takeaways from Autonomy Day and then Battery Day right there. Definitely fun to go back and watch those. Feel the energy from the presentations. This company is changing the world in all the right ways. So inspiring. And it gets me even more fired up about Tesla's future. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. I hope at least some of these points were, if not new to you, helpful to hear again. And I recommend if you're ever doubting Tesla, just go back and watch one of these. I was not doubting Tesla. I was just looking to go back and see if I'd missed anything important. So if you found this video insightful, I'd appreciate a like. Until next time.